Yes, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Hope each and every single one of you are doing well. Before we get into today's video, I want to say thank you for the recent support on the last four or five videos. Some videos have hit a thousand likes, some of it seven, some of it 800. The support is absolutely unreal. And we've had nearly 200 new subscribers this week. So if you are new to the channel, please do go down, hit that subscribe button. And if we could hit 600 likes on this video, that would be absolutely unreal. It's free to do and massively helps me out. So go down and smash that like button to pieces. We have got so much news. The club have announced Jaffa Tanganga is leaving. Emerson Royale links to AC Milan. Fabrizio Romano has given us an update regarding Conor Gallagher. Murillo from Nottingham Forest, we've got an update on him. And as well as Ryan Sessegnon has been announced from the club that he will be leaving this summer. So much to get into, so go down and drop a like. We'll start with the club actually coming out with some updates in the last few minutes. And the first one is regarding... Javik Tanganga, Ryan Sessegnon, Eric Dyer, and Ivan Perisic. And the club have put out the following. It says, here we go, bang. We can confirm the departures of Javik Tanganga, Ryan Sessegnon, Eric Dyer, and Ivan Perisic following the conclusion of their contracts. We thank Javik, Ryan, Eric, and Ivan for their service for the club, and we wish them all the best for the very future. Yeah, good luck to uh, good luck to those players. And then there was a formal announcement. A thank you to Jaffet Tanganga. Never really felt it worked out for him. Um, I do think at times he was a little bit mismanaged and probably could have gone on to achieve better than he did, but at the same time, probably just not at the level. And there is one, there you go, for Ryan Sessignon. In a way, I'm glad that, you know, we, we've already got rid of the Deadwood, such as Ryan Sessegnon, Jaffet Tanganga, Dyer's gone in January, Sanchez went in the summer, Winks went. So we're slowly coming to grips with an overhaul of the squad. We, we've started brilliantly in this in this summer window, you know, with, with players being released and obviously signing Timo Werner on a loan deal. I think, do think we probably could see up to 10 players leave in the next coming weeks slash months. I think the likes of Sergio Regulon, I think the likes of Tango Undon Bele, Hoiberg is being linked to a move away to Napoli, Giovanni Lo Celso is being linked to a move away to Real Betis, Brian Hill, Manuel Solomon, Joe Roden. You probably could see 10 players being linked to a move away in the next coming weeks slash months. Now, last night, David Ornstein dropped a transfer bomber, as the kids call it nowadays, regarding Connor Gallagher. It was 14 hours ago, and it says, this is what the report says. I, I spoke about it on the stream. Aston Villa hold primarily talks with Chelsea over a move for Connor Gallagher. Aston Villa also in contact with the 24-year-old's camp. Unai is a huge, huge admirer, plus emerging as a top target. Chelsea remain interested in John Duran among candidates for the number nine role. So could Aston Villa potentially do a swap deal involving Duran? Maybe, but Duran is obviously one of their good youngsters. So I can't see him going to the likes of, you know, I couldn't see him joining the likes of um, Aston Villa. Now, Sky Sports come out last night with a, uh, this morning, sorry, with a report from um, Sky Cover. And he says, Chelsea will not let Conor Gallagher go for less than 50 million. And it says, Spurs are expected to bid for the player. I do think in the next coming days before the Euros, you will see Tottenham put in a bid for Conor Gallagher. Sometimes it helps clubs to see that rival clubs are interested in player. It can kind of put a rocket up their backside and they have to all of a sudden pull their finger out. And as it stands... You know, if 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 Gallagher um, has a choice between Tottenham and Aston Villa, I do believe he probably will choose Tottenham. I know Aston Villa are in the Champions League, but he wouldn't have to essentially move house. A lot of his family are in London. Obviously, he come through Chelsea's academy. He's a London boy. Um, so I do expect Tottenham to go in for a bid. Whether it's going to be 50 million or not is yet to be seen. Fabrizio Romano has given us an update with regards to Connor Gallagher. And he has said that 
He said this around an hour ago. He said, Chelsea are prepared to ask for a fee of £50 million for Conor Gallagher this summer. After the Mount Deal last summer, Chelsea see Conor Gallagher in a similar position with Aston Villa, Tottenham and one club abroad, abroad keen on signing him. No negotiations taken place. Now, Conor Gallagher, of course, is homegrown. Conor Gallagher, of course, is Mr. Reliable. He's, he's somehow never misses a game of football. You know, in terms of his Premier League stats, he played 37 games last season with five goals and seven assists. The season before, he played 35 games. So he's absolutely reliable as they come when it comes to his availability. And in terms of his own individual stats, he's one of the most role-rounded players in the Premier League when it comes to his stats. They are absolutely insane. Assists, um, shot creating actions, take-ons, touches in the penalty area, tackles, interceptions, blocks, passes completed, passes attempted, progressive carries, take-ons. As you can see, he's in very good company with the likes of uh, Yusuf Afana, who is a player linked to a lot of clubs, and Bruno Gomares, McAllister, Declan Rice. Federico Valverde, uh, Zara Emery, the youngster from PSG, Jolinton, you know, Mr. Reliable is one of the most reliable players in the Premier League. Now, in a system which Ange Postacoglu plays, I think Conor Gallagher would thrive in that eight role. I think if, if Tottenham were to bring in a, a DM and have Conor Gallagher as the number eight and James Madison or potentially even Eze as the number 10, I think that makes Tottenham a completely different unit to what we've got now. In the current team we've got now, we've got very similar profiles. If you look at the, the team that played against Sheffield United last game of the season, you know, we played a system where we had Dejan Kulisewski up front, which to me is at times, I'm happy to see the experimental. You know, we already practically guaranteed ourselves Europa League football, but we played a, a central midfield partnership on a double pivot of Benson Court and Saar. You know, but none of those are an outstanding number eight. They are they are good technical players and they do offer a lot to Tottenham, but they're not an outstanding number eight. And then you look at the team that played against Manchester City at home. We switched it up again and we went with a three in the midfield with a kind of four diamond. And we went with Hoiberg. We went with Benton Court, Madison and Saar in the attacking role. I actually think Madison played quite advanced that game as well with Johnson and Son up front with the pace. Now, Hoiberg, you know, I think he will be moving on. Napoli have just signed Conte as their manager. Conte was a big fan of Hoiberg. He was being linked to a move away to Juventus. I don't necessarily think that move is realistic now because they've got an attacking manager such as Thiago Motta, who plays an absolutely obscene formation, which is either one week it's a 2-7-1, the other week it's a 3-6-1, the other week it's a 3-5-2, then it's a 4-3-3. And he's looking for possession-based players. I don't necessarily think Hoiberg fits that, but I do think he thinks a Conte-based system, which is very much low block counter-attack. Now, Benson Core, good player for me, but not a number eight. And obviously, we know Madison's best area is in the number 10. So Conor Gallagher could potentially be, you know, Tottenham's new number eight. I will be a little bit disappointed if he does go to the likes of Aston Villa. I'm not going to lie to you. Now, um, Rob Guest, who is Ali Gold's right-hand man, has put out some news regarding Tottenham, and it says, um, as you can as you can see, Murillo deal, Emerson Royale exit, dream Tottenham defence after key summer transfer moves. And it goes down. To, this is the guy I want to speak about. This guy right here, Murillo, being heavily linked with a move to Tottenham. And it says Nottingham Forest defender Murillo could be the ideal player when it comes to a Tottenham signing. A new centre-back this summer, a standout player for Forest in his first season in the Premier League as a 21-year-old who is valued at £30 million by transfer market. Has been linked with Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, to name a few, after delivering some excellent performances. A player who is very good on the ball and can pick out a pass. The Brazilian is first and foremost a very good defender and operates in the left-sided centre-back. Now, straight away, I'll come back to this article, but straight away, having a good left-sided centre-back who plays in that kind of area, for me, is massively important because we've looked at, you know, the likes of um, how how dominant Mickey van der Ven has been in terms of, you know, his how important he has been to Tottenham 
in terms of his um his overall his pace in the system. Very, very good defender. Reads the game brilliantly. Murillo is another one who I think genuinely could be a a very, very good signing that goes under the radar. Now we know Tottenham have a, a relatively good relationship with the likes of Nottingham Forest. If he is available for around thirty million pounds, I would bite your arm off. You know, can play left sided centre back. Um, can play right sided centre back. Of course, is left footed. You know, been at Nottingham Forest since the 31st of August 2023, so nearly a year now. Played 32 games in the Premier League, so of course he's reliable. Um, been in the Premier League only one season, but has, as, as, as the report says, has made a big, big impact. And I do think if he becomes available for around £30 million and you've got Mickey van der Ven and you've got the likes of Murillo as left-sided centre-backs. And then on right-sided centre-backs, you've got the likes of Radu Dragusin and Romero. And then left-back, you've got the likes of Udogi. And potentially, we could be bringing in Doughty from Luton. The links are starting to pick up. He could be available at a cut price. And then on the right side, you've got the likes of um, Pedro Porro and potentially bringing in someone else. Emerson Royale is obviously being linked with a move away to AC Milan. But as it stands right now, AC Milan don't necessarily value him at our price tag of around £20 million. So there's so much more to get through. So make sure you are subscribing and all that good stuff. Now, the, the, the rest of the report um, goes on to say, let me bring it back up on the screen, uh, Nottingham Forest defender, uh, sorry, I've just read that bit, a player who is very good on the ball and pick and pick out a pass. The Brazilian in his first and foremost, a very good defender and operates the left-sided centre-back role. That would uh, would give uh, Spurs a natural replacement for Mickey van der Ven and as a left-back, Ben Davies, who operated as a left-back in the Dutchman's absence before Dragusin sealed the move to London. I'd be more than happy to bring him in. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, Jared Braithwaite is another option uh, in that position, but his price tag may be considerably high for Spurs. After a breakout season at Everton, they've seen him uh, make his international bow for England. As the report says, the Toffees demand a fee of £80 million, which for me is absolutely ridiculous. Um, now, the report then goes on to say, following a loan spell with the Spurs Academy graduate, um, this is regarding Tanganga, uh, obviously, he's he's leaving as well as Ben Davis. You know, he's been linked to a, he was linked to a move away as well. The back end of the January window, as well as Joe Roden. You know, was at Leeds. Ashley Phillips is another one. Dorrington's another one. You know, we've we've actually got relatively good centre back depth. Um, this the rest part of this article talks about Yudogi and Poro alternatives. Tottenham have some very good options in the fullback positions. But the drop in quality is notable when Pedro Porro and Destiny Udogi are absent. Spurs need to ensure that the levels remain regardless of potential changes. And that means bringing in alternatives for this duo this summer. On the right, Emerson Royale could potentially be in line for a move after interest from Saudi Arabia in January. AC Milan have been linked to a move for the Brazilian ahead of the summer deadline. And Spurs could be, uh, could, could be able to bring in a decent fee for the former Real Betis man. Jed Spence uh, could be... On the move permanently, he is not um, in Postacoglu's thinking going on a two um, two low moves last season. Given the balancing act at Tottenham um, are going to have Europe next season in regards to homegrown club, spraying uh, pl uh, numbers ahead of return to Europe. A move for Spurs man Kyle Walker-Peters could be an option in terms of a left-back option. Tottenham and Davis uh, may have a decision to make to plan for the future. Let's talk about Kyle Walker-Peters. Because, obviously, come through Tottenham's academy, knows the club very well. As a backup right back, I think he would be a better option than... I think he'd be a better option than the likes of Emerson Royale. Plus, he is homegrown. Um, I do think if he becomes available at a cut price... I wouldn't be against it, to be honest. He's valued at 20 million euros. Now, of course, you know, knows the club like the back of his hand. We all know that. Played 43 games in the championship last season and he's now promoted back up until uh, to the 
the Premier League with Southampton. He's only got one year left on his contract. You know, one year left. He's obviously part of the CAA-based Agency Limited, as well as most of the Tottenham players. He played 93% of all the minutes he could last year in the championship. And overall, last season, um, played a lot of games. He played 43 in the championship, three in the playoffs, and one in the FA Cup. So he played 47 games. In the Premier League the season before, he played 31. In the season before that, 32. In the season before that, 30. So if he becomes available at a cut price with one year left on his contract, and we know how many different positions he's played, left back, right back, left mid, right mid, attacking mid, right wing, and left wing throughout his career as a versatile option for left back and right back, I don't think it's the worst option in the world. I do think, you know, at a cut price, you know, for if we could pick him up for £10 million and sell Emerson Royale for, say, £20 million, you know, I, I don't think that that's bad by any stretch of the imagination. I know a lot of fans are going to think it's underwhelming, etc. His passing stats are absolutely ridiculous in terms of Southampton last year in the championship. They are ridiculous stats. Absolutely ridiculous stats. Um. Top 2% for passes, 1% for pass completion, top 3% progressive passes, top 1% for carries, top 3% for take-ons, top 3% for touch in the penalty area, top 22% for passes received. Shots and assist stats are relatively good as well. His defensive stats aren't that great, but when you're playing in a team like the likes of, you know, when you're playing in a team such as Southampton, when you are one of the most dominant teams in the, in the championship, you're not defending a huge amount. Um... If he becomes available, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be against it by any stretch of the imagination. And the last part of the article speaks about uh, Sergio Regulon. And it goes on to say the United States International, uh, obviously they were speaking about, you know, the likes of, I believe um, that was Anthony Robertson at Fulham. He could be an option as well. I'll come back to him because he's one of my main options at fullback. And it goes on to say, Sergio Reguilon could be leaving. So if Sessegnon, Reguilon are leaving, we need to bring in a left back. And if Royale and Spence are leaving, we do need to bring in a right back. You know, Robinson at Fulham, for me, could be that could be one of the best options we bring into this football club. Or the likes of Rico Henry from, um, from Brentford. You know, Robinson from Fulham, you know, 20, I think he's 26, 27 years of age. Defensive stats are absolutely stupid. Top 1% of all the players in Europe when it comes to interceptions. Top 7% for clearances. Top 19% for blocks. Top 18% for tackles. Top 27% for duels. Take-ons is very good. Pass completion is very good. Assist is very good. Progressive carries, touched in the penalty area. I've been a big fan for Robinson for a long, long time. You know, of course, he's an out-and-out -out left back. He would add real competition to the likes of Destiny Udogi. If he becomes available at a cut price, he's currently worth 25 million euros and he has four years left in his deal. I do think you probably could see a, a, a side where um, he becomes available for around 25 million pounds. Now, is he better than the likes of Dowerty? I probably would prefer Dowerty. You know, I believe um, Anthony Robertson is actually classed as homegrown because he was born in Melton Kings. He played 37 games in the Premier League last season with six assists. Of course, very, very reliable. And in a Fulham shirt, he has 15 goal contributions in 151 games. He's been at Bolton. He's been at Wigan. But he has made his impact at Fulham, making over 100 appearances for the club. If he becomes available on a cut price, I would bite your arm off. I'll be honest. I would bite your arm off for him. Right now, I'm not going to lie. I generally would. I think in a Tottenham shirt, he would be unreal. Absolutely unreal. He generally would. The way we play, the way how good he is going forward, I think he could dominate that left-back side as well as Destiny Udogi. And it gives us real depth in terms of... We'd probably have the best left-back options in the Premier League with Destiny Udogi, Robertson. Another one I've been speaking about, and I know Sean's a big fan of this guy, and that is Rico Henry. Homegrown, you know, 
at Brentford, 26 years of age, valued at 20 million euros. Contract expires in two years' time and obviously can play left back. Now, only played five Premier League appearances last season because he did have a massive, massive injury, which essentially ruined his season. But if he becomes available as well, we've we've got three good left back options in Dowerty, Robinson, and Rico Henry. And then on the right back side, you know, you've got the likes of Kyle Walker Peters. We generally like everyone's going mad, you know, on the transfers, but the transfer window opens now in what not nine days? You know, that there's there's so much to talk about. There's so many different news, views, clues, rumors. We if we look at Tottenham's transfers in terms of the the, the team that Ange Postacoglu first had. You know, Brian Hill could be on the way out. Solomon's going. Sessegnon's going. Spence is going. Roden's going. You know, Regulon's going. And you bring in, we've brought in Madison, Van der Ven, Radu Dragusin, Vicario, Johnson. And now you add a Murillo, Gallagher, Ivan Tony, Eze, Robinson or Rico Henry. I don't think we're that far away from teams around us. I really don't. I don't think we're that far away from teams around us. Let me know your thoughts on the likes of on all these all these transfer stories. There is so much to get through. Make sure you do like, subscribe, and all of that good stuff. So much coming your way. I will see you all soon. Thank you all for watching. I am.